Welcome to Discovering. I spent a beautiful UP spring day on a river catching smallmouth with Kattashack Guide Service. That's why we do this. That's a tan. Yeah. <laughs> and Kristen spent some time with some students as sturgeon make their way from the classroom to the water. We were releasing the sturgeon that we were holding in our classrooms for a little while and measuring their growth. Stick around, it's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above. The trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. It's spring. In the UP, that means warm days. Or snow. On this day, there was certainly no snow. Perfect! The sun was out, the wind was calm, the weather was beautiful. I spent a day on the river with Chris and Jason from Kattashack Guide Service on the hunt for spring smallmouth. We're out on this beautiful river and it's just an absolutely beautiful day and you know we focus so much in the upper peninsula on our trout fishery and our steelhead fishery that I feel that what we're about to target today gets forgotten. Smallmouth bass. We have an absolutely awesome smallmouth bass fishery. Lake run smallmouth. These big guys live out in the lake. They come in the rivers to do their spawn and they go back out. And I mean, they're monsters. And we're gonna get into a little later on what we're fishing and why, but we're gonna start off with a little bit of this. This fly is actually called a drunken disorderly and you can find it on YouTube or wherever. It was tied by Tommy Lynch in the Lower Peninsula. And this thing is absolute deadly. And we're gonna see if we can get into a couple of fish right away. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Again, this fly is just super sexy. And this is exactly why we do this, because people forget about how phenomenal our smallmouth fishery is. You know, a lot of people, they line hand line fishing when they're trout fishing. You gotta remember, these aren't trout. These things are nothing but anger and red eyes. I mean, this is an eight weight rod. Choice of rods, sevens, eights. And this thing is putting the screws to it. And he's not even that big. This is a little male. Oh, but they hit like a ton of bricks. Man, are they just absolutely awesome. Just awesome and beautiful. Look at that, nice clean, nice fresh green back. Just a little guy. But you see those eyes? Just full of anger, just red. What a magnificent fish. There he is, the Thin Man. Yeah, there it is, on the woolly bugger. The Thin Man on the woolly bugger. Good fish, good fish. Oh, they just get, they just get sideways. They just get sideways in this current. 
Oh! And there is nothing you can do. Oh! They just go back and forth. Back and forth. That's a big fish. That's, that's a, a nice fish. That's a tanker. That's a tanker. Tell you what, if you haven't gotten into our upper peninsula smallmouth fishing, you do not know what you're missing. Again, not to sound like a broken record, but just so often overlooked. That is a beast. Oh my gosh, Jay. That is a beast. On the thin mint, baby. Oh my gosh. What's, can you get me on the right? No. Well, yeah, let's see what here, happens here. here. I'll move this. Let's see if we can get him before the rod goes pop. Nice fish. Got it. Nice fish. Oh, Jay. Oh my Ooh. gosh. I'm not gonna hold this one for him. I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let him claim his glory on this one. There we go. That's why we do this. That's a tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Take a look here. <sighs> 21 on the nose. 21 inch smallmouth, baby. Woo! Okay. Thanks, boy. Exactly why we do this right here. Oh. We need something in the scrapple, just FYI. Man, these things are just like bricks. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is a good one. This is what we do this for right here. Right here. These little bricks are an absolute blast and they are hyper aggressive. So we'll bugger with all the colors. The thin mint, they call this the thin mint, I think. Because it's mint. got black and green yeah. and brown. That's, yep. that's the thin mint. Yep, so we might we might tie this on for steelhead and smallmouth. We might still have a few drop back steelhead in here. We'll see if we can't find one. What fly is that, Jay? That's a thin mint. That's a thin mint. That's a thin mint. Oh, you gonna charge them in those trees. Mm -hmm. It's not even a hit, it's a snag. Ah. What side do you want me to net on? Can you keep him left? I don't even know yet. Yeah, I'll try to keep him left. All right. Assuming he cooperates here. Comes. So for all y'all watching, communication in the boat is key. Right. Nice low male. Wooly bugger. Wooly bugger small man. All right, get back out there. What was cool about that though is I watched it to come out. Another little river gangster. Not what we were looking for, but. Oh. Oh. Every now and then, one of those guys shows up to the show. Show them the love, there man. Go. Show them the love. Oh, he just munched it. Just munched it. Just munched on the thin man. 
Oh. I saw that mouth. FYI for everybody watching. Big J always out fishes, Chris. Oh. Nice fish, too. That looks like a nice fish, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, Jason. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Dude. That's why we do this. Ah. So we're obviously not out here fishing dry flies for monster smallmouth. You know, we're not throwing size 18 Griffiths gnats or size 12 stimulators. This isn't trout food. This is big fish food time. So we use a lot of things like this, for example. That is a big drunken disorderly in natural color. It's a bait fish looking pattern. You can do it in yellow. Yellow is a real good color and it really pops well, yellow and olive in Artanis water. But another fly that was given to me by a guide from downstate is called the flip flop fly. Okay, it's kind of leachy looking, black, but it has a shovel on the head and the heads of these are actually made out of cheap flip flops. You go to Walmart or Meyer or wherever, get yourself some cheap flip flops and you cut the heads out and create like a pan on it. So we're trying to push water, to move water. You know, we're, we're in good weather. You can definitely fish on the surface, but dealing with this bluebird sky almost and the high sun, Jason and I are both subsurface right now, fishing all the structure we can, all the boulders we can. So we're using big uh, bait fish, big, big types of flies that disturb the water, that make a presence when they're, when they're in the water. Because you know, these smallmouth right now, they're either right at the tail end of pre-spawn, actively spawning fish or post-spawn fish. They're gonna hit for a multitude of reasons. They're gonna hit out of anger, they're gonna hit out of protection. If it's a post-spawn fish, it's gonna hit out of, out of hunger because it hasn't eaten. So these big flies really get their attention and we're actually throwing them on seven weights, eight weights with long sinking tips, 10 foot sinking tips to get the fly down right away. Because as you can see, well, you may not be able to see, but this is deep water, it's big water, right to the bank, around all the structure, get the fly deep. So that's what we're using. And that's how you move these big fish. There we go. Nice fish. Yeah. Ooh. This is exactly why we do this. He's not big, but look at his color. Oh! What color? Just a little one, but look at that color. Man, is that a pretty fish. Just the most beautiful fish. Oh, that's a nice fish, dude. All right. Oh, she's just listening. Look at her belly. She's a fatty butt. She's a fatty butt. Can I say fatty butt on camera, Brian? Four Western UP schools gathered to release lake sturgeon they've been raising for the last seven months in their classrooms. About 100 kids met at the Ontonagon Marina to say goodbye to their class pets as they set them free into the Ontonagon River. 
I'm excited because I get to release the surgeon into the water. If you can remember back to 2020, we shared a story about the first sturgeon in the classroom program here in the UP. Well, we started it back in 2019 prior to COVID, uh, kind of got cut short, unfortunately. Uh, so we, this will be actually the second full year that we've been able to do it. So it's, it's in its infancy, but uh, it went really well this year. These young lake sturgeon were reared at a trailer on Lake Ogibbic with hundreds of other lake sturgeon. Ten were selected and brought to schools for kids to raise, study, and learn about their importance to the waterways of the UP. Six of these fish survived the school year and are ready to be set free. It's been quite amazing. Uh, most of these fish started out at five, six inches, and most of them now are are anywhere, the smallest one I think is 14 inches uh, to over 20 inches. So they've grown, and the, the sturgeon, just like uh, human youngsters, they all grow at different rates. You'll see that today uh, as the fish go out with the kids. They're all different sizes. A number of different levels of learning that happens. We've got, they're obviously learning about lake sturgeon. Uh, they're learning about the river system around their community, but they're also learning a little bit of aquaculture, you know, what it takes to keep fish alive, what they need to survive, and, you know, some responsibility to be feeding them. They're taking data, their weights and measurements, so they know how much to feed them. So there's, there's learning on uh, all different types of levels uh, when they have these fish in the classroom. He's being ornery. Yeah. It's important to give the students the opportunity to interact with the issues surrounding their environment. And here, we're here in the Great Lakes states and, and the sturgeon population is, is certainly one of those issues. So it spreads that awareness to the young minds and gets them more involved, so more invested in, in their local community and the region around us, so. My name is Bryce and I go to school at Wakefield. I learned that they uh, like clean water. I'm Jordan Wetberg and I go to Ontonagon Area School. They're a lot rougher than they look. They look kind of, and they're like more docile, the more docile kind of fish. My name is Jaden and I'm at Besmer. My name's Henry and I'm at Besmer. They can live for a very long time and that they eat bloodworms. They're rare species. My name is Christina and I go to Ironwood Area Schools. And my name is Reed. I go to Ironwood Area Schools as well. And it, we got to learn like a whole bunch about them. People got to hold them and like measure them and weigh them and feed them. Obviously. How fast they can grow, that's one big yeah. factor. They got they, really big for being in our classroom not that long. Was, pretty sure we had the second biggest surgeon here. It helps well, people in like science learn how like they grow and live in the wild after they tag them and all that. All these fish will have uh, small tags in them called pit tags. They're about the same kind of thing that you chip your, your dog or cat with. And uh, these fish will go out, start feeding, and they'll work their way out to Lake Superior here uh, and live their life. And they might get captured by uh, an agency doing survey work. And so we can identify them. Uh, so in the future, uh, these fish will be in a database. Uh, and then the ultimate hope is that in 15 to 20 years, when they become spawning age, they'll be swimming right back behind us here and heading up river to spawn. And that's, uh, that's where we know we've been successful once we get to that point. Hopefully continue on into the future with uh, other schools getting an opportunity uh, in the Western UP to do this. One of my favorite parts of this program is not only the hands-on learning experience these students get, but what these kids name these fish. One of them was Gus and one of them was Pistol. It's named Julian. We named one of them Megan the Sturgeon and one Squirt. But sadly, Megan the Sturgeon jumped out of the tank and when we were on spring break and sadly died. So we had a, we just released Squirt. And did you name them? Um, <laughs> not really, no. I hope to do a story someday where Squirt, Gus, Pistol, and Julian are all over six feet long and recaptured during surveys on their way upriver to spawn. If you'd like to know more about efforts to reestablish a lake sturgeon population in the Ontonagon, go to the 906 Outdoors YouTube page to watch our stories from a couple years ago. 
Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.